is JavaScript really faster than Python? Or is, is it Python like dominating JavaScript nowadays? Let's go ahead and find out the truth. So in this video, we will try to figure out the performance differences between both JavaScript and Python. Both of these languages are compared to each other's are like kings in different fields or different ways. But when it comes to the performance, there's some similarities and there's some like huge differences between both of the languages. So I want to thank our today's sponsor, Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of premium classes just made up and created just for you. So you can learn everything you want from like deepen your own skills or sharpen them, learn a new skills and grasp on a new creativity or get lost on your own creativity. It's actually a really awesome platform with too many classes and I'm in love with it. So I, since I started using this, I, I learned a lot, especially what I love. And as you all know me, that I absolutely adore the high quality content that you can get in here and you can just get it very easily and it just works absolutely right. So for example, if you're like me, if you like web development and everything from HTML to JavaScript and WordPress, well, there is actually specific topics made up for you in classes. Chris in here, like building from your portfolio, uh, maybe like hand code to your first website, like from, you know, design into code and HTML basics and everything. And you can absolutely grasp, like take it from a beginner side of things into the professional and learn absolutely with awesome classes Chris in here. They all absolutely were great and have so many information for you to take your skills to the next level. Or maybe if you are like a UI designer in here, UI UX designer, you can find a lot of older classes as well. I'm going to be sure that all of you are going to adore this kind of classes and all going to love the kind of quality and the contents they provide you and the added value they're going to be learning from these classes from Figma to XD or Adobe XD and animation and all that sort of stuff. It all works fine. I personally started taking this class in here from Andy G Pisa, which is May creativity your career or six exercises to create a successful side projects. And this is a really awesome uh, class from an illustrator, designer, and a podcaster that tells you how to start your own projects or your side projects while working on something else. And this is as we all of us like developers and designers and creative people in general, we all need this kind of class, we all need this kind of like knowledge to grasp on and actually start our own side projects and start making revenue and take it to the next level and learn from it most importantly. And of course, be creative and enjoy our side. It's just a really awesome class in here. It has so many things. It has like so many students as well enrolled. And I love how the guy actually presents this stuff and how he simplifies the topics in order to get it all right the first time. So the first thousand people to use the link down in the description will get a free trial of one month from Skillshare. So go ahead. So before jumping into the comparison, I want to just give you a heads up that I'm not going to tell last a, a single language is completely better than the other language or any of that sort. So for example, let's start the basic test or the basic benchmark that a lot of people would do. And it's actually a deal breaker for both of the languages. So we've got a simple loop.javascript file in here that does take care of simple loops. And we've got a different one that is actually another simple loop, but this one is actually a Python thing. And as curious in here, it basically does the same thing, but this one is in JavaScript. The other one is, is in actually in Python. So this one is called Hyperfine and it's a really, really awesome one. So you can, you can search GitHub about this and you can find it. So I'm going to do Hyperfine and I'm going to do straight through here. I'm going to use the warm up. So what the warm up basically does is actually like warms up the algorithm. So if you are basically going to benchmark anything that uses caches or any of that sort, you can use the warm up. So I'm going to use always, I'm going to do a warm up of five at least and um, like a five iteration is that what it is. And I'm just going to give it the script that I want to run. So the script is actually you need to put it between like, you know, single quotes in here. And what I want to run is actually node and when I give it the, you know, the module name in here, which is simple loops dot JS. All right, so click enter, this will start the warm up and this will like start the estimate. Scrutiny, the estimate for this one is 173 milliseconds uh, for JavaScript. So it has the maximum one, 227, and the minimum one is 155. So we usually take the maximum one because it's actually the worst case scenario that you would want to know about. So this is exactly what it has in here, uh, the worst case scenario. And it has like the mean time is 173 milliseconds. So it's like 170 
milliseconds. Let's go ahead and try with Python right now. So I'm going to do the same thing, hyperfine, and I'm going to do dash dash warm up. I'm going to do five and I'm going to run Python. And by the way, I'm using Python 7. So just to tell you about that, so it's do like Python dash dash version, it's actually 3.7. And for the node version, it's actually node 17, which is like the latest current version of it, uh, both running on that side. Okay, so we got Python in this one. I'm going to put the hyper fine, where is that? So hyper fine dash dash warm up, going to give it five and we want to run the script. So we're going to do Python and we give it what's the script name simple loops dot pi. Okay, so as soon as this one, the warm up took a little bit longer than the actual one, you know, when we tested it with Node.js. So it's still taking longer, the warm ups, like, you know, couldn't take it off anyway. Um, yeah, there you go. It's, it's taking off now. And there you go, it has finished. And screw you see the maximum is now 11 seconds. And we got a mean time of almost 10 seconds for this one. And screw you see the number is, is actually, you know, the same number we've got It's it's actually matching the number and everything. And Python to compute that on the full loop and everything, it took 10 seconds while JavaScript literally took less than a second, it took like 100 milliseconds. It's, it's, it's just crazy to think about it at first. But that's the reality about like differences between Node.js. I'm saying Node.js because this is where JavaScript is actually currently running. And just a disclaimer, just for you to know that I'm running currently JavaScript on Node.js because Node.js uses the V8 engine uh, and that compiles and interprets or just like does the GIT on JavaScript. And that's what actually runs as well on Chrome or Opera. Uh, maybe Firefox has a different engine. So that if you just try to do it in Firefox or something like this, you're going to have a completely different perspective, completely different numbers and benchmarks. So um, yeah, so V8 is the most kind of sophisticated and the best implementation from Google side on like the best performance implementation of JavaScript running. And that's what Node.js comes in because he uses that behind the scenes. So there you go. You got these comparisons both between Python and JavaScript. And it's actually mental between those 10 seconds compared to 100 millisecond for JavaScript. So for example, if we try to elevate this to a trillion, okay, trillion here, trillion there. So I'm going to clear this one. I'm going to run the benchmark just right again. Uh, seriously, this is one. This one is a trillion, right? So it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to remove the warm up. Uh, no need for the warm up anymore. Let's just go ahead and straight to the measurement to see the benchmark. So you see, now JavaScript is actually stolen and it's, it's actually stuck just to uh, compute that large number. And it's actually huge. And if you take a look quickly on my CPU usage right over here, so you see the CPUs are, are going very high. For example, this CPU core is going 100% and compared to other cores. So it's actually taking a lot of resources and the computational side and all that kind of stuff. So literally look at this, it's just, it's just stalled all the way. So I'm not going to even try to run Python after this because JavaScript is stalled and Python would never just run it on, on that particular one. So let's go ahead and try to a different impl implementation of Python and see. So I'm going to try to go back to the previous number of gods in here. I'm going to comment this code and I need it. And I've got this one. So just just comment this code right here, put the number. So let's go in and try to run this, but I'm not going to use the you know, the regular Python or the standard Python interpreter, I'm going to use a completely different Python interpreter called PyPy. So if you're not familiar with PyPy is, is a completely different, awesome interpreter. So let me just show you that. It's actually a different implementation of like or compilation of of Python, it uses GIT as the V8 does, which is just in time comp compiler. And it's very, very speedy. So compared to Python, this one is very, very speedy, or like the regular Python, which is called the, the you know, Python C or, or lib Python C. So which is like by default, but PyPy in here is, is a completely third party implementation of the Python compilation, it's it's much faster. So if you need a fast kind of engine or a compiler for Python, and you need to run your code 100 times fast, well, it's actually increasing like 4.2 times faster than the C Python, which is the default one. Um, so you can run it on PyPy. So let's go and try this. Likely for me, I've got Python or I've got PyPy installed. And let's go and try the PyPy. So I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to do instead of Python, I'm going to do just PyPy and I have the PyPy version 3, which is similar to the Python version 3, which is by default 3.7, the latest one. So I'm going to run this one. Screw you see, it was stalled before, right? And, and right now, it's 194 seconds compared to 
JavaScript in here. It's crazy if we try this one. I haven't saved this one, sorry. Um, if I clear real quick, it's 164, 168, 169 seconds, and compared to the PyPy, 194. So you see, it's a huge comparison, a huge kind of change on that. It's just to use PyPy now compared to the regular C Python library or compiler, it's just mental. I, I mean, I, I can't speak words right now because I cannot tell you exactly what's the difference right here, but the performance is just absolutely crazy. So if you want to go for performance with Python into the computational side, and I'm saying the computational side here, hear me out you need to go for something like PyPy. Maybe you want, like there's another one called the Cython, uh, not the C Python, but the Cython, which is, you know, performance as the PyPy as well. So you might want to choose something like this if you want the performance. So let's try, for example, to run right now, like IO kind of stuff. So this one has an SSV um, or CSV, sorry. It has like 10,000, like a 10K records. There, there are like random records, clue seats, 999 to the 10K records, whatever. So we try to read that. I, I mean, it's not that big of a deal anyway, but let's go and try to do the comparison between both JavaScript or like the Node.js JavaScript implementation versus uh, Python right over here. So I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna put hyperfine in here. I'm gonna do node again, and I'm gonna do read large file.js, okay? And the birch mark is going to start. It's going to see 40, 41 milliseconds just to get started from this one. Um, let's go ahead and do the other one. So Py, I'm not going to use PyPy anymore. So I wanna, I'm going to revert back to regular Python. And I'm going to go to read large file.py. All right. And if we compare that, it's going to see just from the first endpoint, we got 24 milliseconds in the meantime compared to a 41 milliseconds in JavaScript. And if you compare the maximum, this one is 73 compared to the 32 milliseconds. So there's a huge difference when it comes to that. As you can see, Python is a clear winner, but it's not like a big of a deal compared to JavaScript, but it's actually a clear winner. It's like halfway through. This is 24 and this is a 41. So it's like halfway through, um, you know, JavaScript when it comes to IO stuff. And this is actually also known that Python is much better to deal with data when it reads data and it you know, like writes data to the disk and you know handles IO perfectly while JavaScript or Node.js it just does a, a, just a decent one on it it's not a, like a big of a deal screw it's this one isn't really that bad on a completely different example what we want to do we've got two servers in here like server implementation in both Node.js JavaScript and Python and those are like using the standard libraries not using anything like Django or maybe Express for Node.js or any of that frameworks or libraries that does allow you to create, you know, servers on the go. Uh, we're using the standard library, so everything is standard. So I'm, what I'm trying to do in here, I'm not going to test the server performance. Instead, what I'm going to test is actually how fast it is to start the server, basically. So I'm going to use Hyperfine again and going to just like test how fast is it going to be like the server to boot up between both of these, between Python and JavaScript. So I'm gonna start with JavaScript again, as we did before, and it's gonna be JavaScript server.js. So this should start the benchmark for us as we in here. So I had to do a slight modification in both of the scripts because a server obviously is gonna run indefinitely. So once you start it, it's not gonna like stop. And for the benchmark to work is it needs to like, you know, start and the stop and start and stop different kind of instances of the script. Like it does it 10 times on like the, the you know, the loops and everything. So it, it does test 10 times the script, then it gives you the mean time and the maximum, and the minimum. So this is what benchmarking basically works. Um, so what I did in here, I added the quick for just to straight quick whenever you initiate a new server in here and as well on the JavaScript. So you just do a process.exit whenever you start a listening on the port. So that's what I'm doing right here um, on both Python and everything. So let's go ahead and test how that does. So I'm gonna run the command again. And this one, gonna see it takes 100 milliseconds um, for basically JavaScript to, or Node.js, 100 milliseconds for that. And if we try now Python, and we're gonna see 90, 98, uh, 97. So 97 milliseconds to boot up, then quit. So for a server from like a cool down, I'm not using any warm up by the way. So this is a very important thing because I'm not doing any warm up before running the script. Like the script and the server is, is completely cold. 
So it hasn't been like run before or anything of that sort. Another good test to run on both of the languages is actually the Fibonacci kind of series. So this one does a recursive. So it has two, it has a recursive and it has um, an iterative kind of version. So we are using the, the recursive in here, which is the best kind of version of it. Uh, it's, it's actually a lot worse than the iterative one. So I chose that in actually, you know, just to make sure that we test those and put them right into the test to see how they perform. Uh, so I got the Fibonacci of 20, which is a quite huge number compared to that. So it's going to take quite some time. So let's go ahead and do, um, so I'm going to do, it's called Fibonacci.js and start testing this. It's going to take 40 seconds tops for this, for the 20. So number is actually 20. And I'm going to try, it's called Fibonacci again, dot pi. And running this, it took, as you see, it's taking lower than, than what JavaScript is. So that's that's a pretty good sign from a perspective of that. So let's try to get the number a little bit, you know, bigger. I'm gonna try 40, which which is kind of deal breaker. So this is where things are gonna start be a little bit more complicated and intense. So I'm gonna start JavaScript in here. And you see, at first it starts tall, then they, then they give us one second out of the bat. Uh, for an estimate, it takes quite some time to finish up. So we've got to wait uh, just to see how it goes. It's like more than one second and a half for JavaScript. Okay, so it's one, one second and 628 milliseconds. Just crazy how that is actually um, compared to the previous results. Now, if we test this with Python, I'm pretty sure this will just like um, stall or whatever. Uh, completely just not run and there you go so after a very very long time waiting there you go it finally finished and it gave us like a 31 seconds for the script to run for fibonacci of number 40 which is quite nuts compared to javascript like one second so it's like 30 times slower than javascript so this is it's quite crazy just to think about it but obviously uh, we can just give it like a res as a result, Python is not really efficient for those kind of computational kind of stuff compared to Node.js. And I can mainly say that they both share the C stuff, but because JavaScript uses the V8 and the V8 uses the GIT, and if we run this using the PI or PyPy, we're going to find this much, much faster. So let's, let's for example, try to use the PyPy in here as a, a last example, a last test. Um, so it says... Um, yeah, it says PyPy is not defined because I need to use PyPy3 and that is actually taking quite some time as well. So but that is, that is actually reduced to three seconds now for the estimate time. And this is what eventually is going to be for the estimate time. So that's it's just crazy to think about it. And there you go. That took like four seconds and a half compared to one second. But if you compare it to the previous result, that was like 31 milliseconds or seconds, sorry. That's, that's a much, much better implementation. Mm -hmm.